Hey, what's up everybody on YouTube? This is Free Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. And this time I want to talk about perfect satisfying loops, just like this one, for example. So you can see that these elements, they come just at the exact right timing into position. And I think this is something that is really important, which makes these loops satisfying and people just have a great feeling about it. Okay, so I want to show you how you can build loops like these ones or something like this one. This is more simple, but I just also think that this is a beautiful loop. So you can see these were my results after five days in a client job. So these were the results that I built for the agency Creative Spark. But I can also show you what I did on day one. For example, I started here and just gave the client different ideas what we could build. Of course, this is not really polished, but you can see on day one, I just went into Cinema 4D and was excited to build some different ideas. And for example, you can see that on day one, I already started with this idea. And in the end, it came out like this one. So I think this really looks beautiful, but you can see sometimes already on day one, you have the idea and then you just go through the next days and polish them more and more together with the client. So on my Patreon right now, I show you how to build this loop, for example. So there are free lessons on my Patreon, but for now here on YouTube, I can also show you how to build something really cool. So maybe thinking about maybe we could do something like this one, but honestly, this is just a beautiful copy here. I just rebuilt this beautiful animation by Vanerstedt. I was just curious how he built it. And this is so beautiful. So he is the king, the true master of these loops. Okay. So just be sure to check his stuff out on Instagram. But I hope I also had some beautiful ideas here, okay? <laughs> so you can also see here on day one, I already started with this idea and this one turned out to be this one in the end. So this is just more reduced, more minimalistic, more polished. But you can just see that this idea was also there right at the beginning, just a little bit different. So yes, as I said, there are free lessons on my Patreon that you can check out if you are interested in how to build loops like this one. But now on YouTube, let's also do something cool. So I'm just thinking about what we could do. So maybe I will just give you an idea how you could build something like this one. So I think now would be the time to just go into Cinema 4D and have some fun. And maybe one last thing, what would be really amazing if you support me here on YouTube. So just subscribe to my channel, ring the bell. And uh, other than that, now let's have some fun in Cinema 4D. All right. So finally in Cinema 4D and we could talk about this loop. All right. So I suggested this one to my client. But in the end, we didn't go with this one. But for example, this one made it until the end. So this is a really super smooth loop. So there is a perfect transition from the last frame to the first frame. And you could let this one play forever and there will be just no cut. Okay, so basically that's what the loop should do, right? So it should be perfect and there should be no difference between the end frame and the first frame. All right, so this is really beautiful. And this one I went through in free tutorials on Patreon, how you can build this one, light it and shade it and make it beautiful. But yeah, for now we could talk about this one on YouTube. So this is still not perfectly polished because because yeah, this was just in the initial state of the project where I went into Cinema 4D and built these loops really quickly to just show some ideas. So it's almost perfect, but I think it could be still a bit more polished. All right, but I think we could just quickly talk about this project and then you get some ideas for the loops and maybe you get interested in more stuff. But for now, let's just quickly go through this scene. All right, so I would just go out of here and you can see it's really super simple. So let's just see what do I have here. Okay, let's get rid of this cube. All right, so there's just another wall. So for example, when you frame this one, it will look like this one and maybe you could have these additional elements, but for now they are really not necessary. Let's just see. And this one is like the purple carpet for the sphere. So let's just get rid of everything to reduce it really to the basics. And you can see there is this cloner here with these elements, the swinging pendulum stuff. So let's just get out of the camera and I will also deactivate the borders here. And let's just quickly see how I built this one. So you can see these ones, they are just swinging from left to right. And 
All in all, this is already a really cool element and I can just quickly show you how you can build this one. So first, of course, you grab a cylinder. Okay, so this is really basic stuff, but you can see you grab a cylinder element, just match it to the proportions that you need for your element. And then you just duplicate it by holding down control and just make it a bit thinner, not so thin, but maybe something like this. So you have some kind of a rope and then you should just be careful to place your null in the top position. So you could, for example, hold down shift and click on the null. So you have a null here and just move it into the top position where you want this pendulum to swing from left to right. So you could do it like this and then maybe just move the null out of the hierarchy and put these two cylinders into the null. All right. And then just hold down alt again and click on a cloner and then just put this one to a linear and then don't move it in the y axis, but in the x axis, something like this. And then you would have something like that, for example. And then the next step would be to, for example, just grab a formula. All right. So this one is scaling it or moving it in the position here. So for now, I want to get rid of the scaling and the position. And I think we need something like the rotation. All right. Something like this. So this is already looking cool. Okay, so this is way too intense. So I would put this one to 20 and then just play with the settings here. So let's see what happens when we duplicate this one. So it looks like it will increase the frequency. Okay, so maybe 820. So I didn't study math or something, but I know when you multiply the time with, for example, 0 0.2, then this one should be way slower. I guess it should be something like 20% of the original speed, but I think you need to type in a point maybe and not a comma. So, so let's just see this when I put in a point. All right. So this is looking better. All right. And more or less, you just have to figure out the numbers. So here in this tutorial, I don't want to get too much into the numbers. So I went with some strange number like this one, 808. All right. And let's just go into the camera and let's make this one visible again. And somehow it looks like this was the magic number for me. But of course, there is some math behind it. So when you are clever, and think about it, then you will get the exact numbers. <laughs> but for now here, because this was just something that I did in the pitching phase, I just can't remember exactly what I did here. So maybe just to give you a little bit more of a value here in this tutorial, I just want to mention that, for example, this sphere, you can see that I'm keyframing this one and I also have the camera in the null hierarchy. Okay, so you can see the null with the camera and the sphere is moving and this will help you so that the sphere is always in center. All right. When the camera would be outside, then it would be like this one. But when you just have the sphere in the middle and then move the camera into the hierarchy where you also have your target object, then this will always be in center and you will have your additional elements move around it. But you already have a good foundation for the loop. Just wanted to mention this one. And maybe just to give you a little bit more value here on YouTube, I can also quickly talk about this animation. And by the way, if you like this bamboo assets here in the background, which just help to make the scene more rich, then you can download these ones on my Patreon. Okay. There will be different variations of this setup and you can rotate it and just put it into your scene and put a little bend deformation on it to get this gentle wiggle in the wind. Okay. So if you like this one, just check my Patreon. But anyway, here in this scene, you can see that I again used the, let's see, the formula effector to get this animation into the scene. So it looks like the formula effector is definitely something that you can use to make these loops. And, and you can also see I just animated in some randomness. So it looks like on the beginning I have zero randomness and on 180 it's also zero randomness. So most probably I animated the parameter here, but then you can see from zero to 30, we just move up the randomness and give it a little random wiggle here. All right. And then just because it was hard to get the same noise pattern at the beginning and the end, I just got rid of the randomness and then it's kicking in again, but it's not so much about the randomness 
synchronous here, but it's more about the formula effector, I guess. And you can see the formula effector is helping this sphere, which is by the way, only moving on this spline. So maybe I just quickly show you that the sphere is in the null object. All right. And there is the spline path aligned to spline expression on it. And then I put it on the expression of the circle. So this is more or less just fake. And this is not really based on physics. So sometimes you just have to fake it. All right. So the sphere is moving in a circle. Then you can see the formula effector is giving us this rotation here. All right, and basically you can see this element is probably doing one rotation. Let's just see. Yes, of course, it's doing one rotation because the sphere, of course, is also just going once around it. So I think then it makes sense to put this one on 360. And then I forgot the math here. Maybe you just have to play with it and just be sure that you put this number with the time multiplied by some value that, as I said, I forgot the math behind it. But you can see with a certain number here, you can adjust it that this element is also doing one rotation in the number of frames. So yeah, just invest some clever thinking here or just play with the values. So for example, when you put this one to 0 0.3, then you can see it's doing too much of a rotation. And then you just go down with the numbers if you, if you are not so clever with math. And then at a certain point, you will land on the perfect number here. Of course, it would be a better solution when you know how to do it. But as I said, this is just to give you an idea here on YouTube how you can play with these elements. And as I said, there will be more of this knowledge on my Patreon. But for now here on YouTube, I just want to thank you for your time. Think about to support me, ring the bell. Please write a comment because this is always so satisfying to chat with you. So would love to hear your thoughts about it. Thank you so much for your time and I wish you a happy Christmas 2022 and see you in the next year. Bye everyone.